What is magic? Magic is the hidden knowledge of the ages, just waiting to be discovered by those of us willing to dedicate decades of our lives to unlocking these ancient secrets. Let the lessons begin. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Magic Witchcraft and Occultism. This episode is supplementary, we're going to be doing a book review this week. Now, I said we were going to be doing this book specifically, but I still can't find the picture. So instead, we're going to do another book on symbols. And we're going to be doing Signs, Symbols, an Illustrated Guide, and Origins of Meanings. Now, this book is good and bad in its own way. Now, I like to quickly mention something because there's two versions of this book. There's this one, which is the second edition, which came out in 2019. And there is this one, which is the first edition, which came out in 2009. It's the identical book. The only thing they changed was the cover. So that's all. And uh, also, I hope you all like the intro because the I worked on that, and I'm particularly proud of it. And it'll be at the beginning of all the videos from now on. Now, before we begin, please remember to like, share, subscribe, click the little notification bell so you never miss an episode. And I stop getting lost in YouTube algorithm, and I'd really appreciate that. Okay. Now, let us begin with the cons of this book. And there's only two. This book really has no particularly good order. I mean, it does have something like chapters, but a lot of the information that's in those chapters just doesn't really seem to fit the heading or the motif, if you like. And you'll see if you get the book. Um, and the second problem with this is a lot of the descriptions are particularly short. Um, you'll get a picture, a name, and a very brief description, which you will see in the pictures in, a, in about a minute. Now, the purpose of this book is that it's 337 pages, not counting the glossary, the index, and what would be a bibliography. Uh, and it does cover a wide range of symbols, uh, but and mostly covers symbolism, and there is a difference, and you will see, because it covers things like plants and trees and flowers and stones and a few other things that don't really fall into the traditional idea of symbols so i'm not a fan of that but it's an omnibus book because of this and it has a lot of great references so it's a really good starter guide so this book i put like a middle of the road five out of ten it's a great book for someone to get started and it's also if you've been practicing for years there's guaranteed to be something in this book that you don't know so that's a good start now, at the beginning of each section, there's, or each page we're going to go over, or the group of things we're going to be going over, there's like a mission statement in the very beginning, and I'm going to read that at the beginning, and then I'm going to go over some of the things that's um, on the pages, because the print is very small, even when I blew up the pages, I don't think you can read them, so I'm just going to go over a few things, and you'll see how this book is laid out. First, we're going to go over precious stones on pages 42 and 43, and then we'll go into uh, gold, precious matter, and some of the base metals. And you'll still see it very quickly how this book has a very odd layout. Precious and semi-precious stones flash for color and light. The fact that they come from the earth links them with divine energy as a symbol of spiritual power and purity. Some were credited with powers of healing and protection. They have been used for centuries to signify status. Transparent stones are linked with divination, while red ones indicate adder and vitality. Some stones are linked with earth months, and some of them have their own, own, own associations as well. Now, if you look there on the very bottom, you'll see uh, that's an agate, a ruby, a sapphire, jade, and a diamond. And this is what I meant. It has a little picture, uh, the name, and a very brief description. So this gives you an idea of what you're going to be getting in this book. So most of the book it has this set up as it is. And then we have this one here on gold. This one, it will roughly tell you a little bit about gold's history, that it was used to signify wealth and status. It's associated with an assortment of different religions and different gods. And then over here, we have a few different base metals. Uh, there's um, lead and silver and iron, and it'll tell you a little bit about them and some of their symbolism. Moving on to flowers. From pages 82 to 85, I'm only showing pages 82 and 83. 
Flowers in full bloom are the symbol of nature at its glorious zenith. They reflect all that is passive and feminine and are associated with beauty, youth, and springtime, as well as spiritual protection and peace. Much flowers symbolism is linked to color, scent, and appearance. In the Victorian period, a language of flowers was developed, and flowers were used to send hidden messages. Flowers have also been used in healing and rituals since ancient times. Now, in the interest of saving time, I can't go through all of them, so I'm just going to choose one on each page from here on out. Uh, on the bottom left-hand corner is a lily. It's associated with uh, peace, purity, virginity, and uh, fertility. And each of the other ones are just going to tell you a little synapse of each one of the flowers. And you'll see that in the next section. Moving on to trees. These pages 94 to 95. A source of sustenance, shelter, building material, and firewood. Trees are associated with fertility, longevity, and strength. They represent dynamic life, death, and new growth. And symbolically link heaven, earth, and the underworld. Many are associated with specific deities or spirits, while fruit trees such as date and palm are often representative of the tree of life. Evergreen donate immortality, while deciduous trees signify rebirth. Others serve community focal points. Uh, we'll go over the oak. Oak is um, associated with masculinity, strength, courage. Uh, also, oak and the apple tree were sacred to the druids. Uh, and they would make their wands out of those uh, branches of trees specifically. Now we move on to the Kabbalah. Pages 174 to 175. Followers of the Kabbalah, a branch of Jewish mysticism, explore hidden meanings in the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, in order to achieve a more spiritual relationship with God. Making uh, use of diagrams, symbols, and numerology, Kabbalah is a highly complex esoteric system. It was originally an oral tradition, but from around the 13th century, it appeared in literature. Among the Zohar, the Book of Splendor is considered to be the most significant work. All right, on the bottom left, you see the self Torah. I think I said that right. It's the Tree of Life, and directly next to it, it gives you a, a more simpler breakdown of it. And then we have over here, Gemetra. And I think I said that right. This is basically the Jewish version of numerology, and the and this is my take here. Uh, their language is very, very unique, because it's one of the few that has a letter associated with a word, and the word has a meaning, and then that word is also associated with a number value. And it's a very interesting system, and there's a lot of hidden meanings in the language itself. Uh, so this uh, will give you, will read you a little section. I would read it, but I'm running out of time. Moving on to witches and Wicca. Page 192 to 193. Witchcraft is an ancient tradition practiced in various forms as far back as ancient Egypt and in all religions around the world. The Celts Wiccan, meaning witch, had close ties to nature, but also to magic and the occult. Traditionally respected as a symbol of wisdom and knowledge, Witches were persecuted by the Christian Church from the 15th to the 17th century. At this time, their practices were deemed heresy, and much of their symbolism became associated with the devil. Let's go with the Triple Moon. It represents the goddess. It also represents the uh, waxing full and waning moon, and also the circle of life, or the three major stages of life, and also the... Maiden, Mother, and Crone. It has a lot of symbolism on top of symbolism. It's a very interesting symbol overall. Moving on to numerology. 206 to 207. Through the ages, different civilizations have used numerology to explain the past and foretell the future. It featured in ancient Chinese divination, for example, Magical Square, which has also been associated with ancient Egypt and Indian divination, other nations, including ancient uh, Greeks, Jews, and Babylonians, developed their own system of digit summing, adding together particular number squares, such as four digits in a particular year. Various forms of numerology continue to be used today. 
Uh, the basis of numerology, whatever the system, is the idea that each number, 1 through 9, has its own symbolic meaning, which can be interpreted to define a person's major characteristics. Uh, to explain specific events in the past or to predict events in the future, in some practices, 11 and 22 are also significant numerology and intensifies the symbolism. Moving on to colors. 200 to 284, people in every culture respond emotionally in the colors, often without realizing it. For example, psychologists have established that warm colors, red, yellow, and orange, stimulate, while cold colors, blue, indigo, and violet, soothe and relax. Although interpretations may vary from culture to culture, color symbolism is universal, making it one of the most important human systems. Since that introduction to this section was so short, we'll just do two of them. A uh, red represents the uh, root chakra, uh, courage, uh, strength, love, uh, anger slash wrath, um, and uh, blue. Blue represents uh, the sky, uh, represents calmness, coldness. Uh, light blue is for the throat chakra. Dark blue is for the third eye chakra. Moving on to alphabets, and this is the last one. Alphabets, 306 to 309. The first alphabets appeared when pictographs evolved into symbols that represented individual sounds. All alphabets derived from Northern Semitic, which de developed in the Mediterranean is in 1700 BCE. This system paved the way for phonetic alphabets, the first major script on speech sounds. This led to development of Hebrew alphabet the European alphabet via Greek, and the Asian alphabet via Arabic, or Aramaic. Based. There's not really a lot to add to alphabet, so I'm just going to let the pictures stay on the screen. If you can read them, read them. Uh, I do want to add one little thing, that um, the alphabets or ancient alphabets would sometimes change depending on region. So if you were in the north, the south, the east, or the west of a country, uh, some of the characters for an alphabet could change depending on regional interpretation. I just want to throw that out there in case you're comparing it to other books for other alphabets for translations for whatever reason you might have. So this concludes my um, book review of Signs and Symbols, the Illustrated Guide and Origins and Meanings. So I hope you all enjoyed the book review and and I was mentioning the page numbers because I was skipping a lot of things. It's a particularly large book. And there's a lot more useful things in there for magic and occultism. But it also covers just a lot of different topics. And um, next week I hope to have the um, episode 12 on the superconscious mind done. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you enjoyed this book review. And if I don't have the episode 12 done by next week, there will be another book review. So, as always, I wish you all the very best of luck with your research, and go in peace.